want you to know this. All of you hoes that come around here and be like, this book is a lie. It's a lie. I'll be blocking y'all immediately. Because if you listen to the video, you would see that just about everything or 70% of this book was in the movie American Dream. Hello there, Bellas. If you are not already a part of this book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes you, I'm talking to you. Hey, you, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before I the YouTube gets it if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's continue talking about Latoya Jackson. Bye. Latoya Jackson. This is against our rules, Mother said, appalled. You know that you should live at home until you're married. Then I'd like to be the first one to break the rules, Randy replied coolly. His girlfriend, Julia Harris, was a pretty background singer with an act that had opened for the Jacksons on tour. Randy, you're still in school, Mother continued. Then she said nastily, this girl's an old lady. Girl, girl, Katie, girl, why should you move out to support her? Because I love her and I want my independence. Michael and I overheard Mother, Joseph, and Randy as they talked into the next day. Finally, Mother surrendered. Joseph, let him go, we heard her say. Don't hang on to him. If he wants to go, then let him be. He's going to do it his way. We were surprised mother gave in like that. Randy and Julie moved into a fabulous condominium in Encino. Not long after our brother left, Michael, Janet, and I were sitting in my room late one evening. We sometimes stayed up talking or playing games, then falling asleep in one of our rooms. The phone rang, but I didn't answer it, thinking it must be a fan who'd somehow gotten our home number. When it rang again, Michael looked concerned. Latoya, he said, I think you should answer it. I lift the receiver. Hello? A stranger's voice said, I think I just saw your brother Randy in an accident. A really bad accident. Mother and Joseph had also picked up and were on the line. What kind of car did you see? Joseph asked. A Mercedes 450 SL. Oh my God. It was the correct make and model. A lot of y'all was like, you think Randy turned crazy because of the accident? I'm like, accident? I never knew about an accident that one of the Jacksons had. The girlfriend, the old lady that Catherine was talking about, she really stepped up because they didn't think that Randy was going to walk again. And uh, they were trying to put Randy on painkillers. He was like, no, I don't want no painkillers. They was trying to put him into a rehab. His girlfriend, who actually was a nurse, was like, no, I'm a nurse. I'm going to take care of him. So at the end of it, their opinion of the old lady changed because she really stepped up. In 1980, I launched my solo career, or I should say my father launched it for me. In Joseph's mind, there was simply no question that I would enter show business. For a while, I studied business law, but he discouraged me at every opportunity, asking, why are you doing that? You don't need that. I disagreed, knowing how complex the business could be. Paul, we heard this story before. Is everybody still on Latoya's story? Janet Jackson, remember in her documentary, she was like, I wanted to be a lawyer. What? Latoya just said she wanted to be a lawyer in her book. But Joseph told me no. It's the same thing that Joseph told Latoya. What the hell? Ain't nobody got their own story? I recorded my first album, Latoya Jackson. To guide the project, Joseph selected a producer with no professional credits whatsoever. This was illustrative of my father's drawback as a manager. He was so good at getting the ball rolling, but eventually found himself out of his depth, which is why every one of his children eventually left his management. I mean, Joseph tried to pressure Michael into producing me, but my brother resisted. 
It is well known he believed that family members should make it on their own. I agree with him 100%. I've always wanted to earn my own success as Latoya and not have it hinge on my famous last name. Michael may be treated like the rest of us within the family, but in the public's eye, he cast a mighty long shadow. One nobody would willingly choose to be judged under. Facts. In fact, I didn't even want Jackson to appear anywhere on the album, but Joseph insisted. My father hopped on Michael until he reluctantly agreed to produce and co-write with me the song Nighttime Lover. Without friends or any life outside Havenhurst, I'd grown so emotionally dependent on mother that my brother Jackie, see me joking, remarked, Latoya, what would you do if mother died? You'd probably die too. You're with her every minute of the day. I can't believe you. Don't you want a boyfriend or something? Jackie was trying to be funny, but I thought he's probably right. Oddly enough, Joseph's infidelities played a part in our closeness. It's funny, mother had always tried to shield me from the outside world as an adult. I felt compelled to protect her as well. It killed me to know that my father's running around on her was common knowledge within the music industry. In fact, the word around town about the Jackson patriarch was, if you want to get to any of the kids, just get Joe a woman. Mm. It reached the point where mother opted to stay at home rather than attend public functions. She felt correctly that people whispered and snickered behind her back. I'm not gonna be at a table full of women that Joseph is hunched all over, smiling in my face. Hi, Miss Catherine. Girl, shut the fuck up. Poor mother. The things she had to put up with. All my father's girlfriends were always so nice to her when they saw her. Patronizing is the word. Kissing her cheek, hugging her warmly, cooing over her like a flock of pigeons. Seeing how sweet and kind my mother was to them made this charade even more unbearable to watch. Anytime Joseph hurt mother, it hardened our hearts against him. I'll never forget how back in Gary, Indiana, she had to walk nine blocks to Broadway to catch a bus to work at Sears and Roebuck. After the department store closed, mother frequently stayed behind to count the day's receipts, rarely getting home before 10 o'clock and often past 11. Gary's winters are bitter cold, the wind whipping off Lake Michigan, and the slippery sidewalks were especially hazardous for someone with a limp. And at that time of night, no woman should have been forced to make her way home alone. But Joseph refused to pick up his wife in the family car, remaining slumped in front of the television watching professional wrestling. My brothers bundled up against the cold and defying the city curfew, escorted mother home safely. There were countless other times when she and I went to and from the market in a taxi because Joseph wouldn't drive us. Maybe to some people, these seem like little things, but they troubled all of us. I doubt that many children truly ever know all the facts of their parents' marriage or its chemistry. We certainly have never understood why mother has stuck with Joseph for over 40 years. As much an enigma as our father was to us, we had almost as many unanswered questions about our mother. How could she stay with a child batterer and philanderer? How could she witness such violence against her own children and do nothing to stop it? Why didn't she protect us? Naturally, I can't answer for mother other than to say that she loves Joseph madly. Gradually in the early 1980s, mother's long smoldering resentment towards Joseph and his other women began to flare. In the past, she never responded to Michael's prying questions about her marriage. We're all accidents, right? He used to tease. You played Reby and Jackie. But the rest of us, mm, we kind of mistakes, right? One time, what threw Michael off was when Catherine responded, someday I will divorce Joseph. I'm just waiting until you all get older. 
Maybe when Janet graduates. So one time I was over a good friend's house, okay? Me and a good friend, we grew up together. And it was a bunch of us girlfriends sitting around trying to support her because her and her husband had separated. We were all sitting around trying to support the woman and her two daughters were there. One of her daughters, um, mild-mannered, but the other one, the younger one, ooh, I told you them baby girls be something vicious. My Judy right? was like, you know, I want my marriage, but I don't know if I can deal with the other things. My daughters are still young. The youngest one said, why? 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 What we got to do with it? We don't care. We don't care if he come back or not because all y'all do is argue. All y'all do is fight. We better off with him not in the house. And this was the youngest daughter. And at the time, she probably was 11. So when you have that in your face, but you're still hollering, oh, I want to do it for the kids. I, I, I. And the kids are saying to you, we don't need him here. I mean, it's better when he's not here. So then you ask, what's, what's the problem now? So you can't use the children as an excuse, which a lot of women do. Oh, I'm going to wait till they graduate in order for us to separate. Why? Why? Then mother started snooping on Joseph. For years, as soon as she left the house, I would catch him whispering into the telephone. Certain that he was up to no good, I told mother so. One afternoon, she announced, as usual, I'm going shopping, and walked out the front door. But instead of getting into her car, she snuck back into the recording studio and eavesdropped on our unsuspecting father's call to his mistress. Pause. I want you to know this. All of you hoes that come around here and be like, this book is a lie. It's a lie. I be blocking y'all immediately. Because if you listen to the video, you would see that just about everything or 70% of this book was in the movie American Dream. And you got too many situations where you have other Jackson children's, uh, it, it's too many situations where you have other Jackson children confirming what's in this book. So, and remember this, you hoes that be getting blocked. This book was written before the American Dream movie, okay? So where do you think they got the movie from? Jermaine, uh, lazy ass, didn't come up with his own damn plot. He used Latoya's book. They were making plans to meet. When Joseph drove off to the woman's house, mother tailed him in her car and confronted the mother of his illegitimate daughter right there in her driveway. I don't know what came over me, she told me and Michael the following morning. I saw him with her and a feeling just came all over me. Before I knew it, I'd grabbed her and slapped her. This was incredible. You did? Yes, I did. We were torn between feeling glad she finally asserted herself and said that Joseph had driven her to lower herself like that. Practically overnight, mother turned into a new person. Before, she always denied herself material things, but now she treated herself to grand shopping sprees. Her car groaning with boxes and boxes of expensive clothes. Sorting through them, I held up a matching outfit of leopard hat, and shoes and coat. Mother, I said, flabbergasted, this is not you. Why did you buy all this stuff? Because I'm leaving your father. I'm going to stay with my mother.